In another video, I paired up a speaker with a Class D amplifier to produce sounds for a toy sword. Some of you had questions about how this is done, so today we're going to go into detail about how to play WAV files in an ESP32 and amplify the output using a PAM8302 amplifier. Alright, let's do this. I'm going to be using an ESP32 breakup board by the company Lowland that's compatible with the Wemos family of boards. I'm also going to be using a breakup board for the PAM A302 Class D amplifier. I'm going to be connecting the amplifier to an 8 ohm speaker that's easy to mount on a breadboard. To secure this connection, I'll use a couple of DuPont wires and a screw terminal that I'll solder onto the breakup board. To make these connections a little bit easier, I'll mount everything on a half-size breadboard using additional DuPont wires. All of these components can be found in my little Amazon shop. Although the wires from the speaker can be soldered directly to the breakout board, I'll solder in the screw terminal. Then I'll mount the speaker onto the breadboard and if you're using the same one it helps to rotate it diagonally so that it actually fits. I'll keep in mind that there is a positive terminal and a negative terminal for the speaker so that I'll make the appropriate connections to the breakout board. I'll connect the negative terminal of the speaker to the negative on the screw terminal. I'll do the same for the positive. We need to use a specific pin on the ESP32, which is the first digital to analog converter channel on GPIO25. So I'll go ahead and connect a DuPont wire from that pin to the audio input pin on the breakup board. Then I'll connect 5 volts from the low lean board to the VCC pin on the amplifier board. I'll do the same for the ground. With those connections done, I'm ready to connect the ESP32 board to USB. Please make sure that you've installed USB drivers as I've shown in other videos. In order to play WAV files directly from the ESP32, I'm going to be using the DAC audio library from the x website. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I'll download the latest version and drop it onto the libraries folder that's inside of the Arduino directory in my system. I'll go ahead and open the Arduino IDE. I'll then search through the examples for the ones that are provided by the library. Specifically, I'll open the play wave example so that I can make sure that my connections are working. I'll make sure that the correct board and the correct port are selected from the tools menu. These settings might be a little different depending on your setup. Once I upload the code, I should be able to hear the sample file, which is a dialogue from the Star Wars movies. With that working, we can try to create our own sounds that will be played on the ESP32. As an example, I'll download the WAV file that I used on my previous video for the lightsaber toy. You can use any other WAV file that you like. We'll need to prepare the WAV file for reading in the Arduino IDE. To do that, I'll use a free software called Audacity. You can download it both for macOS as well as Windows. The one I'm using is just a collection of sounds that were made to imitate those in the Star Wars movies. I'll choose the section that I'm interested in and delete everything else. Next, to make the file a little bit smaller without losing that much quality, I'll resample it at a rate of 16,000 Hz. 
I'll then need to export it in the Microsoft WAV format with an encoding of 8 bits unsigned. I now need to convert this file from a WAV format to something that can be read in the Arduino IDE. Luckily, in Mac OS, there is a built-in command line tool that allows me to do that. If we look at the contents of what was generated, we can see that it's something that's readable from a programming language. Going back to the Arduino IDE, I'll save the example file, give it a different name, and move the header file I just created to the directory of the sketch code. After resetting the IDE, I should be able to see that additional file as one of my tabs. If I compare it with the original sound data, we can see that there are a couple of differences. I'll make those changes and add the progmen keyword modifier so that it's stored in flash memory. Now I can import that header file so that the sound can be included in my main sketch. For testing purposes, I'll just duplicate what the example code does for the original sound file. If everything goes well, I should be able to hear the same sound that I heard in Audacity just played through the speaker. As we typically want to include more than one sound in our projects, the library allows us to use a sequence class to do so. I'll start by creating an instance of that class and without bugging you with the details, I'll create a separate sound file that I'll name Lightsaber Idle. As I did before, I'll include the header, as well as create an instance of the Wave class for that sound. Instead of passing the individual sounds to the dark audio object, I'll pass the entire sequence. I'll add the two items using the addPlayItem method, as I want the sequence to loop indefinitely, I'll simply monitor it in the loop function and replay it once it's finished. I'll also add a two second delay in between loops. So now, when I upload the code, I should be able to hear the two different sounds played back to back and then a two second delay before everything repeats. So there you have it. Really quickly, we've set up a Class D amplifier with an ESP32 to allow us to play WAV files directly from the chip. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.